Hey, what's up and welcome back everyone to another Warzone Academy video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 more secret mechanics that you need to know about inside of Warzone 2. Whether it's to help you get a win, clutch out a victory, or regain to help out your peers, we're here to make your Warzone 2 experience a little bit better outside of dev errors and server crashes. If you haven't checked out the first 10 secret mechanics, make sure you hang around for the end of today's video because that will be linked at the end. If you enjoy these style of videos where I make your life a little bit easier inside of Almazra, make sure you are subscribed here and drop a little like on this video as well. Without further ado, let's get into the first tip of the day. Let's talk about real quick suppressors. What a lot of people don't realize is suppressors in this game while they do help out with bullet velocity and while they do help you stay clear off the map, there's one hidden change that actually really affects your gameplay, okay? I want you to look at my iron sights and look how easy it is to see all of these targets across the map. This is without a suppressor. Notice what happens when I change to a suppressor on the front end. Okay, you can pick any of these suppressors. I'll go ahead and select this one right here and watch what happens to my visibility. If you notice, and I could have my editor put it in slow-mo or compare it, whenever you're firing any guns in this game and you throw a suppressor on top of it, the gun will have what's called more back pressure on the gun and that smoke will flare up in front of your eyes and shooting a suppressor in this game actually really hurts your long range visibility or even short range visibility if I were to do the exact same test over here on my MP5. See all that smoke that's in front of my eyes as I'm shooting my MP5? If I were to take off that suppressor, significantly less smoke. Visibility is a lot better if I were to throw a muzzle brake on there. It might be better for you as an individual to rock a muzzle brake as opposed to a suppressor to help prevent some of that smoking in front of your screen. All right, so the second tip that you need to change or the secret mechanic that you don't know about is actually improving your movement through changing this setting. Go into your controller, go into the advanced tab, and then scroll up until you see invert slide and dive behavior, and then invert that. Because by default right now in the game, whenever you hold, you will dive, and whenever you tap, you will slide. But there is no reason in this game to slide because it takes forever to get your gun up. So what a lot of people are doing is changing it to inverted. So that way, whenever they tap once, you can actually dive much faster. And you'll see I'm not actually pressing my face buttons here on my controller. It's because I have a scuff controller. You can check it out. Link in the description. And you can remap the paddles on the back to face buttons. So by just tapping one paddle on the back, I can now finesse inside and outside of windows and buildings, get myself behind cover, whatever I need to do. On top of that, diving faster will actually allow you to hit some jumps you normally wouldn't be able to hit. So like right here, if I wanted to dive off with my parachute, if I just jumped, it wouldn't allow me to pull my parachute. But by having tap to dive, I can now tap to dive and pull my parachute at a lower distance than I normally would be able to. All right, for tip number three, what a lot of people don't realize is inside of the Gulag, there are actually plates on the ground, the three armor plates. But it's not just for the Gulag. You can actually take these three armor plates and after you clutch your Gulag, You get to bring those plates back with you to the actual main battle. But on top of that, when you pick up the plates in the Gulag, we only have two plates. We can actually use those plates in the Gulag to replate ourselves. So a lot of times in this Gulag, we play slow so we can finesse and let our health regen. But we can also pick up armor plates and start replating if you have time to finesse. Keep in mind, for some unknown reason, they decided that when we're plating, our legs decide to work at 25% movement speed. So you can't finesse too much. But if you can, pick up a plate, throw some plates back in before you chow, and you can have three plates in your gulag. But regardless, you spawn back with it right now. Okay, so for secret tip number four, what we found out is that gas masks are useless to be stored inside of our backpack unless we're dropping them off to a teammate. Or maybe we drop off one gas mask, make a rotation into the storm, and then come back and pick up the fresh gas mask. Because whenever we have a gas mask in our backpack, it'll start to tick away. We can't stack multiple uses. But what we can do is we can stack multiple uses of our self revive. The way the self revive works in this game is whenever you get downed and then you pop your self revive, your health will instantly regenerate up to full. So you'll see in this gameplay where I won my first solo quad victory, me versus four other players, well, the entire map, 
I'm using multiple self revives to basically make the new gas play, the new stim play to hold this high ground, take the rotation back, and that's how you should be stacking selfs. Don't be stacking gas masks. Okay, so the fifth tip is actually probably a bug, but if you look down in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen, whenever I go to grab my loadout, I'll lose cash. Watch. I go from 4,200 to 3,600. So what that means is every time that you go to a loadout, and I'll show you it here in a moment, you need to drop your cash so that way you don't lose cash unnecessarily. Okay, so you'll see here, I'm going to drop all my cash. I have $19,040. I can pick up a loadout and notice it doesn't cost me anything to pick up the loadout, but then I can pick up my cash and I still have a full $19,040. All right, for secret tip number six, what you can actually do now is repair tires. We've covered in a previous video that we can repair vehicles by going up to gas stations, but you can actually repair tires if they get popped, whether it's from getting shot out or hitting the ground really hard, your tires will pop. Fortunately, you can get out of the car and repair them, or you can actually have your teammate climb on top of the car look out from the side and repair them while you're driving in case you're trying to escape from some enemies check out the clip right here station over here right i think this gas station's repair my tires that'd be so nice which tires which tires bad oh both of my rear tires oh, i can repair it wait i can repair it I what it. wait oh you can let me look let me look let me look oh my gosh Whoa. repair tire i did it while you were driving <laughs> did it cost anything no no for free you just have that in your back all right so for tip number seven secret mechanic number seven right now if you ping across the map it's really easy to lose this this white ping whether it's getting stuck in the buildings getting stuck in the bright terrain it's really tough to see what you're pinging and you may lose what you're actually looking for fortunately there's a way we can change that whether it's pinging something like the ua like the buy station on the map or it's just an individual white ping like that what you can do is you can go in go into your settings Go down to the interface, go to color customization, go to neutral, and you can change it to something a lot more readable. And I just went to this bright purple, and now I'm easily able to see everything that I ping across the map. I'm no longer losing it in the chaos and in the, in the fog of, of war, because literal fog with all the you know weapon smoke and everything that's coming off from our guns. All right, so for the eighth secret tip of this video, and the next two actually have to deal with strongholds, Notice how this stronghold isn't active on the map, but there's still an orange flag here. One of the nice things about this is they will unlock once the public event happens and it says strongholds are active. But the other strongholds were available, like there is a stronghold there that has been hit. So notice this stronghold isn't even on the map, but we noticed orange flags were up and flying. You can go through these strongholds. They will become unlocked and you can find what we always look for in these outside of buy stations, the white supply crates because they drop massive loot 1200 3500 1200 medium backpack a fully kitted rpk uav fully kitted ftac recon a revive pistol and sometimes they drop multiple within a single building so make sure if you see one of these across the map check it out because even though it may not be an active stronghold it still will have a lot of awesome loot Okay, for secret tip number nine, someone has just cleared out this stronghold. They just popped up the radar, and I don't have access to this, right? It says that this is locked out, but all you need to do is wait out. See how it says eliminate enemies three out of four? All you need to do is go around and kill the amount of enemies that it says. Now, it looks like this guy also forgot to loot the white chest, which is the most important part. So I'm going to use that. Hold on to some extra UAVs. Scan for one of the AIs, wherever they are. Kill him, and now it says stronghold complete, collect your reward. So you don't have to be the first into the stronghold to collect your reward. You just have to make sure you're using the directions based off of this, and you get the full benefit of your loadout. All right, so I decided to make this a little bonus tip before we got into number 10, because I'll be honest, it's pretty rare to find. You guys already know you can go into buy stations and you can buy UAVs. But on top of that, sometimes you'll find something called a portable radar. And a lot of people don't realize the value of these and they've ran by them, but what they actually are are their mini UAVs. And the nice thing is you can buy an infinite number of them. So you can hold as many as you want and you throw them on the ground and look at my radar. It's just a little mini UAV. It's not gonna cover the you know depth or breadth of a UAV, but you can carry an unlimited amount. 
Okay, so for the 10th and final tip of today's video, and if you've learned anything new, make sure you are subscribed here. We're gonna talk real quick about these ammo stations because they have completely changed from how they work inside of Warzone 1. So in Warzone 1, when you would hit these, they would give you like plus 30 bullets or plus 60 bullets. It would basically like give you one mag in your gun but now they actually act as full restocks. So a lot of people don't realize when you go down to the bottom here, you'll see I have my Fennec 45 and I have my Lockman 556, and each one of those is carrying their own individual supply of ammo. So if I wanted to drop ammo, I could just press R3 and then I drop ammo for the gun. That's what I actually did here. You'll see now I have 240 and 195. I'm actually owning that ammo in that stack of the gun. You don't have to carry ammo up here. But if you're running low on ammo and you hit one of these, not only do you refill ammo for both of your guns, you also refill ammo for your lethals and tacticals. Look at my bottom right. Notice I have one frag and zero smokes. I hit this and I gain one of each and I gain the max ammo for both my SMG and my AR. Now you can't hit this over and over. It is on cooldown and we're going to wait real quick and see how long that cooldown is and my editor will speed it up and they'll show a timer on screen to see how long it actually took. Boom. There it is. Okay, so we hit it again. Uh, looks like that was about one minute. I'll let the editor show the exact time down below. Once again, if you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new, make sure to drop the subscription here. If you're interested in things like advanced movement, following up on things like that, tap the, tap the slide or tap the dive because there's some really cool mechanics called like dolphin diving that you can do in this game. Uh, or like dolphin like bee hopping where you can do dive and then hit a bee hop and then go flying across the map make sure to subscribe here for an advanced movement guide because there are movement techs in this game that are outside of just slide canceling that we're used to in warzone one make sure if you haven't seen the first video it's linked right here at the end and i'll see you all live over on twitch peace